What is up, everybody? This is Major Miso, and I thought I'd um, do the William Wallace learning campaign. This is uh, a tutorial, and it is very, very easy, you know, up until around these couple of episodes here. Um, but the first four is really basic, so this episode I'm just going to do these four right here. As you can see, I've already kind of, you know, uh, done, the, done some of these. Just to, you know, I don't know, practice a little bit. But, yeah, uh, I thought I'd do this since I just got done with the Joan of Arc campaign. Uh, I kind of feel like I was missing something. So here we go. This is Marching and Fighting. Age of Empires II is about empire building, combat and conquest. You start from humble beginnings, a small village in the Dark Ages. You explore to expand your borders, conduct trade to boost your economy, and research technologies to grow your civilization into a mighty empire. But there are difficulties too. Cunning enemies and rivals that oppose you, powerful castles to destroy, tyrants to bring down. And if you're skillful and a little lucky, you just might build a wonder of the world and create an empire that will stand the test of time. To learn how empires are built, help our first hero, William Wallace, in his fight against his oppressors. We are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, where Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns to conquer Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. But we must act soon if we have any chance of resistance. We need to forge an army by any means necessary. Yeah, that guy is like one of the best voice actors I've ever heard. He's got the fakest Scottish accent ever, even more fake than Mel Gibson's in Braveheart. But he's so enthusiastic. <laughs> and it's time for us to fight back. But if we're to defeat oh. them, every one of us will need to learn how to it's march here. and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, <laughs> click the soldier. Yeah, this really Good. holds your hand. Now, right click near the blue flag. Good! Now, move to the next flag. Click the soldier, then right click near the flag. Excellent! To move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. <gasps> I hope I'll make it. Oh, God. Ooh. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now go on to the next flag where you'll meet some allied soldiers. What's up, guys? What's going on? To move all your soldiers at once, click near the units and drag around them. Then, right click to move them. Try moving your soldiers to the next flag. Did all your units make it to the flag? I don't know. The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. <gasps> Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. Good! <laughs> now, scroll back down until you can see your soldiers again by moving your mouse to the very bottom of the screen. Select your soldiers by clicking near them and dragging a box around them. Follow in the road to the outpost. It's time to knock it down. Yeah, let's knock it down. Right click the outpost to attack. Bargere. These are some freaking jacked up militia. Look at that attack strength. I'm just gonna research all the uh, blacksmithing stuff. Oh! 
post is destroyed. Yeah. That should slow the English raids. They'll never recover. Keep following the path to the oh. village. Home sweet home. Bid fear. Tall. Home sweet home. <laughs> and wait. The English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. <gasps> They're coming to attack your village! Oh, God! Don't panic. Just click your soldiers and right-click the red oh. English soldiers to attack. <laughs> Defeat the enemy soldiers and you will have won your first battle. I love how enthusiastic this guy is. Good job! Now you know how to fight back against the English army. Yeah! Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we will need many more recruits. Much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be steeped in the blood of clansmen. Alright, I'm not gonna end it here. I'm just gonna go to the next episode because... I mean... These episodes are going to be like, what, like two minutes long? So here's the second one. Feeding the army. An army marches on its stomach. Or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we've cobbled together will collapse again. All right, yeah. So to support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, click a villager. Then right-click a forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying ten food. Yeah, this is gonna be a real exciting The villager mission. will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. Oh, the more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Good! You found some gold! Kid? Okay... This should be done pretty soon. Forgeret. Cut wood. So like, I need to do is get one more load. Kia. Erlov. Kia. Forgeret. Erlov. I think they're speaking Gaelic. You now have 50 food. To win, Kia. also gather Erlo. 50 wood and 50 gold. To gather wood, click a villager, then right-click a tree. If you haven't found any gold yet, search in the okay. unexplored Yay. territory. Excellent! You now, now have enough food. Kill these people! Yeah. Well on Edward Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective. If not cruel and ruthless, he's indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. Would that I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray we can be ready for Longshank's coming. 
Okay, so now we have research and technology, I'm pretty sure. All right. Rumors creep in from the south of a giant, giant. leads the forces of Scotland, his great sword driving through earth and man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can hold the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now, our smiths are forging swords, and Fletchers are making arrows and crossbow bolts. All right. Kid Poe. Hey, we got a soldier down there. English use very advanced weapons and armor. To win, you will need to advance to the feudal age and repel the English raids. You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villagers hard to kill. To research loom, click the town center, then click the research loom button. Okay. Should be a pretty, you know, little basic one. I'm gonna do is advance the feudal age and kill some militia. I think that's what the Senate is. So. Good! You're on your way to the feudal age. are making a sneak attack. Now that the battle is over, create some extra militia units at the barracks to replenish your forces. Okay. In addition to gathering food at forage bushes, villagers can herd sheep or hunt deer for food. I think we're pretty good for any English that are gonna come at us, so... And this is only two tutorials, we like, like, four guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a big old steak on his back. A big old hunk of meat. Upgrading to man at arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men at arms. Congratulations! Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization. Near the minimap at the lower right corner of the screen is the idle villager button. Click it and locate villagers who are not currently assigned to a task. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms. Click the barracks, then click Upgrade to men at arms. They're not the British, they're the English. The fact that I'm playing as Scotland is, is the reason that they're not the British. English are no match for your warriors. The English are attacking again. <laughs> Longshanks has invaded, stormed, and sacked the city of Perth. It's worse. He's captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, then the Scottish armies will be too demoralized to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish he'd get his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. Okay, so that was the basic tutorials there. Now it gets a little bit more, you know, uh, challenging. Although it's nothing compared to the other campaign I did. So yeah, next we got the Battle of Sterling, and it says experienced players should start with the number with the scenario six. So I think this is where it 
gets a little bit more difficult. But yeah, next is the Battle of Sterling. So thanks for watching, guys.